welcome or welcome back to Marshmallow Reads. I'm Marcy and today I'm going to be doing the mid-year freakout tag. So most of the booktubers I watch have been doing this tag and it's my first full year as a booktuber and I want to give it a try so I'm going to do it. So basically this tag is full of questions for you to reflect on the reading you've been able to do so far during the first half of this year, and a little bit about what you're looking forward to in the second half. So let's get into it. Question number one, best book you've read so far in 2021. Um, if you happen to see my uh, June wrap up video, you saw that I had a bunch of five star books. Like June was a packed month. It was a very, very good month. And it was really hard to decide which book was like the number one spot for that month. But I, I think I'm gonna stand by it. It ended up being my current favorite of the year and that's On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. This is a graphic novel. I think it originated as like a web story. So if you can't like find the physical copy or like a digital copy through your library, you can check this out on uh, their website. It's beautiful. It's in space. It's a bunch of girls and non-binary folk being being kind of queer and just also just figuring out life. It's like a, a bit of a coming of age story for this young adult. Mia, she's like the main character. You can see her poking out <laughs> of the, the like spaceship window. It's such a beautiful story, such a like actually intensely beautiful book. Yeah, I don't know if any other book I read this year is gonna beat it because this is my current favorite. Question two, uh, the best sequel you've read so far in 2021. I've actually read a few sequels, but the clear best one of these sequels, I would say is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. So this is the second book in the Poppy War series, and I I read this pretty early on, I think like January, but it, it still is stuck with me. I still need to read the third book, but this was a great like middle book in the trilogy because, you know, the main problem with middle books and trilogies are that they have to somehow escalate the excitement to the stakes but like also lead into the third book which is going to have the highest stakes and all that and it, that can be a hard thing to do but I think R.F. Kuang did a great job in continuing the story and developing these characters more. Oh baby the characters in this series are like A plus so if, if you haven't picked up the Poppy War anything please do. They're phenomenal. All right, a new release that you haven't read yet but want to. Uh, so I actually almost picked this one up in the airport I was in like a couple weeks ago, but like like this close to buying it, but I, I didn't. Um, I still want to read it though, and that is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Like I, I don't fully know what the plot synopsis is, like what the main idea behind this book is, but I have seen it on like a lot of people's TBRs and like wrap ups and they seem to really enjoy it and I don't know I'm I think I would like it too like I don't know I, I could just be reacting to all of the influence I'm getting from my media but this looks like a pretty dope book I, I hope to check it out while it's still summer. <laughs> Question number four, the most anticipated book release for the second half of the year. <laughs> I mentioned this one in my exciting upcoming book releases video, uh, and that is Certain Dark Things by Silvio Moreno Garcia. Just look at this cover. Like it is gorgeous. It is right up my alley um, from the description. Vampires, humans, cops, and criminals collide on the dark streets of Mexico City. <laughs> yes, please. Gimme, gimme. I, oh. So I recently bought a few books. I'm going to be doing like a mini haul on that soon once they all come in. But after that purchase, I was like, okay, I need to settle down. I need to like read what I have. No more book buying. 
but this one I might buy it like it oh I <laughs> I can't get over this cover like it is just so pretty so I might have to break my rule we'll see what the reviews are like and maybe I'll read it before buying it but mm, we'll see we'll see Question number five, the biggest disappointment of the year so far. This was an easy one to pick. Uh, <laughs> I'm still mad. I ended up making an entire rant video on it. <laughs> Ugh, it is the fourth book in the Diviner series, The King of Crows by Libba Bray. Guys, like why? <laughs> I still don't understand why she wrote this book this way it, it it was in no way a satisfying ending to a very beloved series i don't want to get into it i don't want to make myself mad today so if you want to learn more about my thoughts on why this was such a disappointment check out my video on that one Oh, okay, this was an exciting one. So question number six asks for your biggest surprise. And for me, like that, a couple books could have fit into this one, but I ended up going with The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This came out of nowhere for me. Like I think I, I saw uh, with Cindy mention it in a video and I was like, hmm? Hmm? it's a YA reverse harem kind of Cinderella story, kind of Knives Out story. I didn't, like, this doesn't seem like a book that I would normally gravitate to, but I'm so happy I did, because holy crap, I had so much fun reading this. And its sequel is coming out, I think in like September-ish. So I am super excited for when that one comes out. Like, it's, it's so fun. It's, um, I think when I talked about it in my wrap up, I mentioned how it gave me like Nancy Drew vibes. Like you're in this fancy ass mansion with these hot rich boys trying to figure out this mystery. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's wonderful. Question seven, favorite new author, either debut author or new to you. I ended up choosing someone new to me and that is Tanana Reeve Du. Uh, so I read her book, uh, The Good House. Wow, it is such a good horror novel. It's like a haunted house sort of deal. Ooh, I would definitely reread that one, like maybe in October when I want to get super spooky. I think I found it when I was digging through some book lists of like diverse authors, uh, I think specifically for horror. And I found it and I was like, mm, okay, I'll give it a try. And I'm so happy I did. Like, I loved it. It was, it was legitimately terrifying at parts and very spooky. Good, good family story too. Oh, loved it. Um, I do plan on reading more of, uh, her books. I think, oh, I forget what the series is called but she has a, an older series that's like based uh, more on I think like different African gods or like different African mythos so definitely gonna check that out question number eight newest fictional crush so this one was a little bit hard when I was younger I had a lot of crushes both real and fictional um, but ever since I started dating my now husband that just kind of dropped off for me but you know, every once in a while, I get some spikes of like, ooh, ooh, you know, some interest peaking here and there. And, and I couldn't just pick one, you know, like I, I ended up picking two because you just, you can't ask a bisexual to just pick one, at least not this bisexual. So <laughs> uh, my first newest crush is Miles from The Good House. And he is just a sweet, sweet man. I, I want to protect him and he wants to protect you. He's smart, he's funny, he's caring, like he's he's kind of perfect. <laughs> so he's he's definitely one of my picks. And then the other is Ren from Girls of Paper and Fire. She's just like when when you first meet her, she's very mysterious, very graceful and elegant, but like you know there's more going on behind the scenes. And then later on in the book, you discover, oh, you're a total badass and super hottie. Like, 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm a sucker for those kinds of characters. So yeah, Miles and Ren, they will be my choices for newest crush. Question number nine, newest favorite character. I could have chosen a few, but I ended up going with uh, the main character from Anna Sunbeam, Mia. So Mia is a bit of a hot mess, um, especially when it shows her in like early high school. Like who wasn't a mess in high school? So it, uh, she has such a good character arc. Like the, you, you see her grow as a person through this story and like, man, she's so good. Like, and, and, and she, oh, she has very pure intentions and she doesn't want to like mess with, oh, I, I don't want to go into too much detail, but just know that she's a wonderful person and I wish her the best. <laughs> Question 10, a book that made you cry. I am the type of person who will tear up at like a toilet paper commercial. Like it does not take much to get me to tear up, but a book that I read this year so far that made me absolutely sob was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is no surprise to anyone who knows me. I love this book so very much. It is the story of the friendship relationship of um, Achilles and Patroclus, and it cover it like takes place in part during the Trojan War. So it is like a Greek mythology sort of story, but whew, the writing is beautiful. the The way, oh God, it's just so romantic and and just just gorgeous in every possible way. Like I am so impressed by by Madeline Miller's writing in this one. Like I gotta read Circe now. I don't even know what it's about. I, I don't know that story. I knew this one going in, but it's still like knowing the spoilers wasn't really much of anything because the, the journey is what is beautiful about this story. So, oh, gorgeous. I cried. I. I could probably like tear up just thinking about it. <laughs> Number 11, a book that made you happy. Again, I could have picked so many for this one, but I ended up going with Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. Uh, technically, this one is not out as a full book yet, but the uh, webcomic chapters that create or um, that make up this book are available online. So that's how I read it and oh, it is so good. It's such a heartwarming book, but because of the topics that it covers, there are also some like sad parts, but that I feel like the Nick and Charlie, the two main characters, them going through those sad parts and like supporting each other through them ultimately makes the happy parts even happier. So I, yeah, wonderful, wonderful story. Question 12, the most beautiful book you bought or received so far this year. So this is a book I bought myself. It was uh, when I was like, I had just gotten vaccinated. I was like, finally ready to go back into in-person bookstores. And I went to a half price books near me and found this gorgeous copy of The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. I have not read this book yet. I still haven't. I, you know, I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> and I, I didn't realize this, but um, this is the 50th anniversary edition of the book, which is why we have this gorgeous cover. Um, I'll try to find um, the original cover to put up here as comparison. I actually don't know what it looks like, so I'm curious. The thing about this cover is that it's simple, but in such a pleasing way. Like I, I love this like sort of minimalist, sort of like symmetrical, asymmetrical thing going on. I think it's gorgeous. Question number 13, what books do you need to read by the end of this year? There are a bunch of books that I want to finish reading or start and finish reading for specific videos that I want to do, like certain themed videos. Um, I'm not going to mention those, 
but I will mention the books that I want to read to complete my seven continents challenge. So this is a challenge I gave myself at the beginning of the year to read one book set in each of the seven continents. And the only additional rule I gave myself was that for North America, it could not be set anywhere in the continental United States. So Alaska and Hawaii would count, but nowhere else. So the books that I, or the continents I have completed so far in this challenge are three <laughs> of seven. Um, Africa, so Homegoing by Jesse takes place in Ghana. Did that one. For Europe, I read Follow Me to Ground by Sue Rainsford. This one takes place in Ireland. And then for Asia, I read the nonfiction book The Dragon Behind the Glass by Emily Voigt. And this takes place in several different countries, but um, mostly in like Borneo and Myanmar. I think a couple other Asian countries. I know it also like they, they popped over into the Amazon in South America, but I'm not counting that one. And that leaves me four other continents, four other books I need to fit in before the end of the year. To help myself out, I have picked out four books that would complete this challenge. For North America, I've chosen a book that takes place in Mexico. That is Murmur of Bees by Sofia Sejovia. I just realized that if I read certain dark things before Murmur of Bees, that one can just take this book's place, but either way, I do eventually want to read Murmur of Bees, so I'll just leave it on here. So Murmur of Bees, from what I understand, is about the story of this family who finds this boy, I think, and he grows up to be a, like, oddly gifted child and I think there's like a tiny bit of magic in there maybe and it takes place uh in and around the like Mexican Revolution and also at the same time they're dealing with the influenza of 1918 so there's a lot going on um but I'm I'm very interested in this one so I'll, I'll have to check it out at some point even if it's not necessarily for this challenge. For South America, I have chosen The House of the Spirits by Isabel Allende, and this takes place in Chile. And I believe this book is about a specific family and their triumphs and tragedies and maybe some magical realism going on. I'm not entirely sure, but I'll find out. For Oceana, I have chosen The Bone People by Carrie Hulme, and this takes place in New Zealand. I specifically was looking for one in New Zealand because I'm kind of obsessed with it right now. I really want to visit it, but now's not a good time. <laughs> Maybe later. From the description, it sounds like this book is about the complicated relationships between three outcasts of mixed European and Maori heritage, which sounds pretty interesting to me, and I, I'm excited to read this one. And then lastly, for Antarctica, I have chosen a real-life adventure novel. So this is Endurance, Shackleton's Incredible Voyage by Alfred Lansing. And this talks about the harrowing tale of a British explorer, Ernest Shackleton, and his 1914 attempt to reach the South Pole, one of the greatest adventure stories of the modern age. Yeah! Big ship! Cold waters! maybe penguins, I don't know. Um, <laughs> this one just sounded fun and you know to be honest there aren't that many books set in Antarctica, real or fiction, so this sounded like the best of the bunch so hopefully hopefully it's good. Okay we have reached the last question of this tag and that is question 14, favorite book to movie adaptation I've seen this year. <laughs> so I was looking back through my journal of all the movies that I watched this year. I had three options to pick from. Venom. Mm, it was fine. Birds of Prey. Also fine. And then the one I picked for this one, Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Oh, so to be honest, I have not read any of the Lord of the Rings books yet. Yet, I do want to go back and actually read them at some point because I am absolutely in love with the original trilogy. Like, whew, I, I think I'm past the age where I could do a marathon of these in one sitting, 
but we did do basically like a back to back like three days in a row of watching these and that was pretty dope. So this was one of the first movies I watched in the new year and I it wasn't the first time I saw it and I haven't read the book but it still fits this this question the best so that's my answer. All right uh, I had fun answering these questions. Uh, maybe this will help you reflect a bit on the reading you've done so far and maybe thinking about oh here's some stuff I want to get to before the end of the year. That kind of helped me a little bit. Okay, that is it for me this week. I will see you again in the next one. I hope you all have a great reading week or just a great regular week. <laughs> Do something nice for yourselves. Yeah, I'll see you in the next one.